this video, we're going to continue on with our S3 series. We're going to look at how we can actually get an object from an S3 bucket. We're then going to save that object to a file on our hard drive. Okay, so here we are back in our test project where we created a bucket. We also added a file in previous lessons. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get the files from our S3 bucket. So let's start by creating another endpoint and we're going to say that this is going to be an HTTP get the route of our endpoint is going to be get file forward slash bucket name so that we can pass in a bucket name of our choosing and grab the file from that bucket We're going to make this a public class uh, with async keyword there, task with an i action result as a return type. And we'll say get object from s3 async. And in the parameters, we're going to say from route string bucket name. And that's going to allow us to grab the bucket name here from the route that we send in and pass it in to the bucket name parameter. We're going to use um, wishful programming here. That means that we're going to pretend like we have methods uh, created already and then call them as if they were already there. So we're going to, because we're going to say add server, or we're going to say service dot get object from S3 async and we'll pass it the bucket name close that off and then finally we'll return an OK status if that is successful. So as you can see the get object from S3 async is not yet as a method that's not yet there on our service class but we're about to create it now. So using ReSharper I'm going to create that method and that's created inside our interface. We'll now head along to our S3 service and you can see that we've got red squiggly lines here saying that we've got something in our interface that is not implemented in our class. So using ReSharper, I'm going to alt enter there and say implement missing members. And that's added it down the bottom for me. Let's start implementing the code that's going to allow us to get the file from that S3 bucket. So I'm going to just first of all say const string keyname. The keyname is the file name that we want to grab from our S3 bucket. So we're going to hard code this in here at the moment, but normally you might want to either pass file name in as a parameter or something else, but um, we're gonna hard code that as a constant at the moment. I'm gonna say try, and I'm double tabbing there to create the boilerplate code for us. I'm gonna say var request equals new get object request. And remember that get object request is from the library, the S3 SDK library that we implemented and installed in previous lessons. So if I quickly go to the definition, you can see that uh, it's the AWS SDK.S3. So if you have not yet installed it, then you need to install the AWS SDK.S3. So we're going to say bucket name and this is going to be the bucket name that we've passed in from the parameter above here. And the key, which is the file name, and we're going to pass it in the constant that we've created above. And we'll close that off. Now we'll say string response body. So we want to store what the response back is in a form of a string. And we're going to say using var response equals await. I'm going to use the client and we're going to say get object async and we're going to pass in the request that we've just built above here and we'll close that off and we also need to add the async keyword up above here. Now we're also going to say using var the response stream equals response dot 
response stream. Right, I need to remove that semicolon there because we don't want to close that off quite yet before we've finished. And we're going to say using var reader. So we're newing up a stream reader here so that we can read the content that we get back from our S3 file. And we're going to say response stream. Okay, next we're going to grab the title of our object that we're going to grab. Also, response.metadata. And providing that we have a title in our object, we'll grab the property which is going to be x-amz-meta-title. But you need to make sure that the object that you have in the S3 bucket has a title um, assigned to it. If it doesn't, it will return back a null. Next we're going to say the content type, and we're going to grab the content type. Equals response dot headers. So this is going to grab content type for us. And let's do some console write lines just so we can see information that has been passed back in our window. Although in a production environment this would be useless and you might want to log it instead. Let string, let's use string interpolation there. Instead of title, it's going to pass back this title. And then we're going to say, do the same for the content type as well. And that's just for debugging purposes so we can have a quick look as we're going through this code. Awesome. And now we want to actually read the response. So we're going to say response body equals reader that we've used above here from the stream reader that we newed up. Dot read to end so that we can read the whole file to the end and close that off. Next, we want to save this file. I mean, you can do many things here. You can like just read it out and pass back the contents to the user or you can read it save it to a file and so I think um, as a demo I'm going to save it to a file here and show you what it looks like in a directory so we're going to say path and file name equals C drive S3 temp and key name so it's going to save a file in the S3 temp directory with the key name that we've created above, which is S3 testfile.txt. Now we're going to create our text equals response body. And we'll say file dot write all text. So there's many ways that you can write to a file. This is one way. But just know there's there's many ways that you can do this. So path file name and create text. Excellent. So let's add a couple of catch uh, catches to the exception down below, just in case something goes wrong. And so it's really good to try and catch the Amazon S3 exception, uh, so that if something goes wrong, it's easy to debug and understand what has gone wrong easily, and allows you to fix it fast. Okay, so we should be able to run this now. Let's first of all head over to Amazon console and have a look at Amazon S3 and have a look at the directory where we want to grab our file from. So inside that we'll see our S3 testfile.txt. Let's open that file just to have a look at what content is inside it and as you can see some information stored in a text file. And under properties metadata we also have a title named some title. So let's head back to our application and let's run this. Now the application started up, we'll head over to Postman and we'll run that. So we'll select send and we've got a 200 back. 
Now if we head along to our Explorer, you'll see in our S3 temp, we have a S3 test file.txt file that has just been created. We'll open that up and we'll see some information stored in the text file. Awesome. And also you remember how we added the console write lines. So you can see object metadata title, some title, content type is text plain. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please remember to hit like and subscribe to my YouTube channel to keep up with all my latest YouTube tutorials.